Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, make sure to subscribe. So I've recently found this girl's YouTube channel where she is just so like chill and relaxed and just kind of like vibes and is super honest and now I can't remember her name. But anyway, I just like her style of videos and I want to sit down and start making more videos like this where I literally just like talk and I have a subject to talk about for the day and I just be open with you guys and make you feel less alone maybe. I don't know. Today I want to talk about faith transition. As you guys know, I used to be Mormon and now I am Christian and whether you are in the same circumstance, whether you've been in the same religion your whole life or you're going from a different religion to whatever. I just feel like this could be something that's good to talk about regardless of if you relate to my exact situation or not and talk about the reality of it and the struggles of it and all that. So let's just hop right in. So it's been like two years since I really started questioning the religion I was raised in. It's been like about a year since I was like fully out in my heart, maybe a little over a year. Oh my gosh, it has been such a journey and I've tried to be open and honest with you guys about like the whole process but I feel like I haven't described how hard it actually is. Finding out that what you believed in your entire life isn't true is one of the hardest things you can go through. It is extremely heartbreaking and I literally had to go through all the stages of grief and I feel like sometimes people think faith transitions are easy because it's just like oh you just decided you don't believe in that anymore and then you decide to believe in something else. It is nothing like that. It is so unbelievably hard. You have to reevaluate like everything in your life. You literally have to break down your entire life and what you've believed in and decide what's true or not. And more specifically, going from being Mormon to being Christian is extremely difficult. And I feel like I haven't expressed how hard it actually is because a lot of things that I thought were just like, oh, Christians and Mormons agree on this. They don't. And I don't think people talk about how big of a difference these two religions actually are. And it's not like I'm just a new Christian who knows nothing, like a baby Christian, learning about the religion for the first time. I thought I knew what this religion was and I knew nothing. So I'm unlearning and relearning at the exact same time. Um, one example of this is the priesthood does exist in Christianity, but it's in the Bible and it having the priesthood meant that you were a priest in the line of the Levites and then now Jesus is our eternal priest and no one on earth like has the priesthood anymore. Meanwhile, Mormons believe that every man over the age of 12 who's worthy will be ordained a priest and have the priesthood. So that's just like one example of so many concepts that are just so hard to let go of and grasp what the Bible actually teaches. And it has been a lot of just like letting go. Like my literally my tattoo means so much to me because of how often I've had to do this. And I mean, even if you have been Christian your whole life, you're constantly letting go of things to God. And that's why it says, let go, let God. And then the D is red. And I thought more about it. I was like, wait, the D is red, like the blood of Jesus. It's so perfect. But anyway, there are just so many things that are hard to grasp. And it's like, I'll be sitting in church or I'll be reading my Bible and I'm like, wait, I think I got this wrong and I thought I had it right in my head. And a lot of that is God like revealing things to me. I get that, but it is so hard. There's just so many different terminologies in Mormonism and Christianity. It's really confusing sometimes and a lot of times it's just a lot of trust in God. But those are like the, the little things. Well, those are not little things. Those are big things. But another big thing is like terminology just in general. Like I'll be in church and people will say words that I just don't understand because we didn't use those type of words. And we're talking about pretty much the same thing, but we never use those words like communion versus sacrament and being saved like Mormons don't talk about being saved and that's like a big thing in the Christian world um, and there's just so many things like that that we just don't really talk about in the Mormon religion or we use different words for and it was so difficult to understand what was going on and what things meant and now I go to like a Sunday school class and I'm learning there as well with like people my age and that helps a lot too and mostly just reading the Bible and listening to what God is telling me but it is so hard sometimes I feel like I'm finally at the point though where I just forget Mormonism exists and then I'm like, oh yeah, a bunch of people believe that. And then I'm like, I'm gonna go make some TikToks about that. <laughs> um, so that brings me to another point. Like a lot of Mormons, whenever uh, someone leaves the Mormon church will say they can leave the church, but they can't leave the church alone. And I think it's hard to understand. And I used to be there, so I get it. But when I was Mormon, it was like, why are these people all talking bad about the church? Like just because they don't believe in it anymore or someone offended them, doesn't mean that they should be talking crap about my church. But now I get it because 
if it weren't for those people, I don't know if I'd be where I am today. Because having that community to like fall back onto and to realize that you're not the only one thinking this is so empowering and so important. Because if this group of people didn't get together and say, oh, we all agree that the church is being manipulative and lying about this, then you feel alone and you're like, oh, well, I'm probably the only one that thinks like this. And you don't, you don't wanna like, talk to other members about it because then they'll be like, oh no, you need to repent or whatever. And so having that community is so important to not feel alone. And if I can also provide that for someone else, then I'm definitely gonna do that. So I feel like that's kind of why I've been more open and honest about it. And then now being Christian, I wanna be more open and honest about it because I want people to know who Jesus actually is and what the Bible actually says and how loving and merciful it is and how it's so simple. Because the Mormon gospel is not simple, it's very complex and that's not the reality of who Jesus is. So now I just wanna tell people even more. But it's like every time anyone really leaves a sort of high demand religion, it's like the people who are still in that religion will say, why can't you just leave us alone? It's like, you hurt me. I'm not just gonna leave it alone. They want you to just shut up. And so why would I do what you want me to? Like, I've done what you wanted me to my entire life and it didn't work out, so I'm not gonna shut up about it because other people deserve to know it too. So there's that. What are some other things that have genuinely just been hard in faith that faith transitions are just a lot and you have to go through one to understand what someone going through one is really experiencing. The other thing is friends and family. Now I didn't really have that many like friends who were Mormon, but anyone that I was friends with has unfollowed me who was Mormon, almost everyone. I'm not gonna say everyone, but most <laughs> who I did have friends in the Mormon church have unfollowed and don't talk to me anymore. But that's okay, I wasn't that close with them anyway. Family on the other hand, my family has actually been like really nice about things, but it's still, even if they're not saying things to me or pushing me out, it almost still feels like you're not included because every family event, everyone talks about stuff that happens at church and a lot, of, a lot of family events are stuff at church, which I don't live in my hometown anymore, so it's really not a big deal for me, but it's still like you feel like you're left out. And I guess I did it to myself, but it does suck, and other people who have gone through faith transitions, I don't know if you feel this, but I just like get really sad sometimes and just wish that I could make my whole family feel how I feel and be like, you don't have to keep living like that because I know how hard and stressful it is to try to be perfect all the time within the Mormon church and it's just really hard. And then talking to some family members about what they truly believe and hearing some of their responses and I'm just like, what? I just don't understand and I wish that I could help you. <laughs> and then coming from a family that just has a lot of different walks of faith, like some people don't really have faith in anything and some people are still super, super in the Mormon church. It's just hard sometimes to connect because a lot of families all can connect because they're all part of the same like religion or whatever and that's not how my family is we all have very different beliefs and so it's hard sometimes i feel like to connect and stay connected but that's just a part of faith transition i guess i mean jesus himself talks about he says like i didn't come here to what was it he said i came here to turn mother against daughter daughter against father-in-law, something like that. Basically like I came here to turn family against family because family isn't the most important thing God is. Let me just, let me just pull that up. Uh, Jesus says like, for I came to turn a man against his father, daughter against his mother, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be the members of his household. And that was like one of the most comforting things that I could hear because it felt like even if they weren't the ones doing that and it's almost like the church culture and how family is number one and the most important thing in the Mormon church. It felt like I was so on the outside and everyone was against me. And so that was obviously very comforting to hear that my sight needs to be on Jesus, my relationship with Jesus and not how my family feels about me. And then I remember I was reading the other day and Jesus literally said, there will be no marriage in heaven. You will be like angels or something like that in the New Testament. And I was like, it just like shocked me because I didn't realize, because in the Mormon church, it's like families are number one, eternal families. That's how they get people to join. And I've talked to many family members who have said like, oh, I have a lot of issues with the church, but I can't give up an eternal family. And it's like, wow, that just proves how much they hold that against like their members. And it's really sad. But that's just one of those things that's really hard to see family members struggling with things in the church when I know that Jesus could free them. But this might be a very niche video and a lot of people will not understand and not relate to, but I guess I just wanted to share kind of my experiences. Another thing is like letting go of a lot of guilt because there are so many things that I was taught that is not 
biblical and isn't true that's just like hard to let go of that guilt and be like oh I don't actually have to have shame about doing this thing and there's really nothing wrong with it and it's just like what I don't know it's crazy a <laughs> little bit of religious trauma I guess um another thing is like the most awkward thing is when I'm talking to someone who I know is Mormon and they know I'm not Mormon and then they just throw some Mormon theology out they're like oh well, I know before we came to earth in the pre-existence and I'm like as far as I know the Mormon religion is the only one that believes in something like the pre-existence there probably are other religions that believe in something like that but as a Christian I don't believe in that and so then I'm just sitting there like all awkward like do I like tell them I don't believe in that but I don't want to make a big deal out of like every little thing and so there's just so many situations that you get put in when you're going through a faith transition it's like ah Another thing is when you're going through a faith transition, how vulnerable you are. Until you figure out what you believe and get strong in your new beliefs, it's really hard because you're so vulnerable and everyone's trying to like throw information at you. Some people are trying to bring you back and it can be really stressful. And I think the biggest thing is just, I don't think people realize when you're going through a faith transition how alone you feel. For me, I felt like so unbelievably alone until I finally learned to just completely trust God and now it doesn't matter because I have Jesus all the time and so I don't feel alone even when I maybe am alone. I still have God but before I like really was able to let that go and trust God it was so hard like how alone I felt all the time and that's always you know that's not a very fun thing to go through and then I guess to wrap it up like at the end of the day faith transitions are extremely hard but extremely rewarding since finally getting a strong foundation in my faith in Jesus finding a community within Christianity finding a church to go to starting to make friends and have just like other people in my life who are Christian has been extremely life-changing even though it meant I had to be like alone for a little bit it is so rewarding and so worth it because I remember feeling trapped like I'd never be able to get out and then I did get out and I was like wait this really sucks maybe it would be better to go back to finally it's like I'm out all the way I'm free and I found a new community and a new home and that is like so relieving and just building that relationship with God that I, re I really never had and how strong that has gotten is obviously most important above everything else and it's 100% worth it so I guess at the end of the day I just want to say that if you're questioning whatever and you're about to go through a faith transition that it will be worth it and Jesus saves Jesus alone and I'm so much happier now and not even it's not even about being happy like, it's just like true joy. Something that I've never felt in my life before. Being content even when things suck. That's just insane. Anyway, I just want to try to be more real with you guys and just be more like a, another human being, I guess. I'm also in my 20s and a lot of things can be confusing and I don't know what I want in life. And if you're in the same boat, then we might relate and you might want to subscribe if you're not already. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.